Hey, what's going on, people? Once again, it's Glendon Cameron, and I was talking to a client. People hire me for all kinds of things. I was reviewing the business plan, and the business plan was... I, I have nothing on my desk, but... Well, wait a minute. And it was like yeah, that thicker than that. I mean, it was ridiculous. So I was just going through it, just going through it, just going through it. And after about the seventh page, I gave him my thoughts. I said, I don't believe in big ass business plans for the following reason. If you have a product, you have a service, you have something you want to sell. The quickest and fastest way is to take that product or service to a stranger and see if they do this. If they, if you can't get them to do that, or to pull out some of you know this green stuff and says, "Hey, here you are. I want what you have to sell." You got a problem. You have a big ass problem. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. Check out my new webinar series. Manage your money, or your money will manage you. This is a different kind of webinar. Links below. Check it out. December 19th, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you there. And that was the situation with this business plan. Oh, my God. Big ass problem. When we got finished, it was down to two pages and half that shit was gone. And this was the kicker. Person thought they needed $50,000. When I got finished, they only needed $500. See, that's another thing. Money hides sins. But if you cannot get to that point as quick as possible, you have a problem. People have these wonderful business plans, articles of incorporation, all of this stuff that's going off. But the most important thing that has to happen is selling that product, selling that service, as fast and as efficiently as possible. And not a lot of thought goes into that process. It's more sometimes more thought goes into the naming of the company. The office space. You think I'm kidding. Why do you think so many businesses go out of business within six months to a year? Because the thought process, the allocation of resources is in the wrong place. Now, as an entrepreneur who's failed with five businesses five times, I understand that because you're thinking, oh, I got a business, I'm an entrepreneur. You have to get to the nitty gritty as soon as possible. Now, let's talk about the exceptions because I give you my thoughts and I'll give you the exceptions. If you're doing something like bioengineering, or you're doing some type of patent plan, or you're doing something that is heavily complex, and you need the buy-in of people to give you to the tune of a million dollars, to, you're going to need that. You're going to need the big-ass, long-ass, highly detailed business plan because the scope of your project changes. But for you, you and you and you and you, if you're working from home, you have a product or service that you're able to manufacture and deliver from home, you do not need a big ass business plan. You need a plan of execution. You need a plan of attack. You need a cash revenue plan. To make it really simple, forget about, I'll give you an example. I was consulting with someone a, year, a few years ago. And there was this conversation about the name of the company. And I was like, what's your product? Who's your market? Where are you going to sell this stuff? How much does it cost? And we spent 30 minutes talking about the name, branding. Let me give you a lesson in branding. If you become successful, the product or service will brand itself. Case in point. When I was growing up, Walmart was a bad word. Walmart, ew, Walmart, 
Now you say Walmart, Walmart, ooh, Walmart, Waltons, billionaires. It branded itself because of the evolution of the business. So, you know, it, it's like these cute names and everything. Matter not <laughs> if it sucks. I'll give you a great example of what I'm talking about. Writing a book. Many people have the whole thing twisted. What you need to do is write the book. What you need to do is to write another book. And before you do all that, you do something called discovery. You figure out who is your reader. When I wrote Making Money A to Z with self-storage unit auctions, I knew who my market was. Anyone that wanted to get in the storage auction business because when I wrote my first set of books, there was no other books in the market. I mean, I didn't have to do a lot of research or think about it because I was I had intimate knowledge of the business. I used to play with people when they would come out to the auctions. I was the guy that was like, 500! Look at that wonderful stuff in there. 550! <laughs> Sucker! That shit was fun. I'm not going to. There is nothing more fun than making someone blow a thousand dollars on bullshit. I mean, it, it is just awesome that you can induce someone to do that because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, routinely did it because it was done to me. That was the grooming process of the business. But I knew the issues. People show up at the auctions. They don't know the protocol. They look at the room. They think they're looking at junk. They don't know value. There were, there were so many elements. How to, what kind of vehicle to buy. How to move the stuff. How to negotiate with the storage auction, storage facilities. There were so many things that I knew that I knew the average person walking off the street did not know and really still doesn't know even with the shows and stuff on because they've kind of glossed over certain things. But understand, if you're creating a business or something from home, you don't need a big ass business plan. You need a plan of attack. Just letting you know. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. Make sure that you subscribe to the email list and sign up for the webinar. It's going to be some awesome stuff, and you're going to hear things you've never heard before. All right, once again, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.